Here I'll provide an example of utility maximization with this Cobb Douglas utility function. This consumer consumes good X and good Y, and the consumer faces a budget constraint. The consumer has $90 of income to spend on good X and good Y. The price of good X is $2. price of good Y is $4. First thing we need is the marginal utility of good X. We're going to take the partial derivative of the utility function with respect to good X. So we bring down the 0.25 in front of the X here. We're going to subtract 1 on top. And then just leave the Y value unchanged. Simplifying this just slightly. Point two five minus one leaves us with x raised to the minus point seven five power, and then again we got y over here raised to the power of point five. So that's the marginal utility of good x. The marginal utility of good y we'll get from another partial derivative. This time we'll take the partial derivative of the utility function with respect to good y got this point 0.5, we're going to bring that down in front. The x variable remains unchanged. However, for the y variable it's going to be point 0.5, now minus 1 in the exponent, and this will give us the following result. Okay, uh, the next step we recognize that the consumer will maximize utility when this following condition holds that is the marginal utility per dollar spent on good X equals the marginal utility per dollar spent on good Y so in equilibrium this has to hold true for the consumer to maximize utility so all we're going to do now is populate this equation with our values for the marginal utility of good X, marginal utility of good Y. We're going to plug in the price of X here and then the price of Y here. So let's get started. I guess I'll go over here. So this is the marginal utility of good X divided by the price of X. The price of X is $2 from our budget constraint. So I'll plug that in right there. And now writing the marginal utility of good Y. We have that divided by the price of good Y. From the budget constraint, the price of good Y is $4. And so now we got this big expression right here. A little messy. But we're going to simplify it. We're going to solve it down either for x or y. It really doesn't matter. So let's start simplifying. Uh, there's no right or wrong way to proceed here. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to multiply both sides through by 4. Okay, so when you do that, so uh, 4 divided by 4, that's just going to cancel. And then uh, 4 times 0.25 is just 1. So now we're going to get this result on the left hand side. So 4 times 0.25 is just 1. And this is still all divided by 2. Uh, the right hand side of the equation cleaned up a little bit. And now let's get rid of this 2 by multiplying both sides through by 2. So 2 divided by 2, that's going to cancel. And then 2 times 0 0.5 is just 1. So now on the left-hand side, we have something that looks like this. And on the right-hand side, 
we have something that looks like this. And now let's simplify further. Uh, what I like to do now is get rid of these terms that are raised to a negative exponent. So rewriting the left-hand side, okay, rules of exponents allows us to place x to the minus 0.75 as just 1 over x to the 0.75. And we'll do a similar thing to the right-hand side of the equation y raised to the minus 0.5 is the same thing as 1 over y to the 0.5. And now this will actually simplify up very nice for us. Uh, if we, well you can see it here, if we just cross multiply, okay, multiply both sides through by y to the 0.5, and then do the same thing with this x term down here, x to the 0.75, if we multiply everything through by that, we're going to be left with um, the following. I'll move over here. So I'm just multiplying everything through by y to the 0.5, y to the 0.5. Now I'm going to do the same thing with this term down here. Multiply everything through by x to the 0.75, x to the 0.75. Let's squeeze that in there. And you'll notice what happens. These will cancel. These will cancel. And you're going to be left with what I have over here. Okay, uh, and just adding up the exponents, we get y equals x. Okay, so that wasn't too bad, hopefully. What we're going to do now is we're going to plug this into the budget constraint. So we're going to go back to our budget constraint and plug this into the budget constraint. Let me just rewrite our budget constraint. We had $90 of income. The price of good x was $2. The price of good y was $4. So I'm going to make the substitution in here where I see an X, I'm going to place a Y. So 90 equals 6Y or Y equals 15. 90 divided by 6. And to get how many units of good X? Well, since Y equals X and Y is 15, uh, it must mean that X equals 15. Okay, so just plugging this result right over here is essentially what I did, and x equals 15. So that is our utility maximizing uh, consumption bundle, and uh, that's it. Hope you found this helpful.